is Dion, and I'm a key accounts manager at Brevo. Uh, I'm here along with Dave Williams, who is also on the key accounts team with Brevo, and we're going to be taking you guys through a couple things uh, about how we've been how we've been rethinking about security uh, and what everyone's calling the the new normal with all the COVID and COVID impacts and all that. But I'll pull up some uh, some slides that I'll share with you guys. All right. So first things first, I want to jump to our contact us page, uh, just so you guys get our, our full titles and our emails, just in case you have any follow ups you want to uh, do or anything you want to uh, reach out to us about after this call. But without further ado, let's jump into the actual presentation. So first slide first. We're talking about rethinking our security strategy. Uh, and as everyone knows, there's been a lot of changes over the past year and a lot of different needs that have served from end users uh, and a lot of different um, of different obstacles we're trying to hurdle and a lot of different things we need to attack and uh, offer support for. And Brevo has been thinking about a lot of these and how we can provide uh, the same old security that you're used to while also helping you maintain kind of the health uh, and facility safety that you need going further kind of from this moment on. So to show you how we're going to do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of background of Brevo first. So first thing I want to talk about uh, is just how Brevo is a true IT platform. So as I'm sure many of you are aware, Brevo is a cloud access platform. And not only are we kind of a newly minted cloud platform, we are created and built for the cloud. So from our time of founding to now, we are created in the cloud. Everything has been focused toward using cloud uh, and kind of everything has been built uh, under that and all the infrastructure we've built has been built for the cloud. That means we can easily serve uh, every size opportunity, uh, every type of customer with those cloud needs in mind. One of the big things uh, that is kind of evidenced by that is our focus on cybersecurity and our robustness of cybersecurity. So if we look at this uh, slide right here, you'll see just a couple of the, the key highlights about how we're cyber secure and what we do to maintain that cyber security. And the main thing I like to highlight on this page is those four kind of stamps or four gold stars that you see on top of the, on top of the screen there. And basically what those are saying is that Brevo is constantly staying on the, the latest and greatest, constantly staying up to date, constantly being tested, audited and getting reports done to make sure we're kind of top tier in our cybersecurity and our concern uh, kind of for our customers' cybersecurity and making sure uh, that we're staying on top of those things and never let them backslide or slip at all. So one thing that I always like to emphasize is that because we're built for the cloud, that allows us to be built for cybersecurity as well. Next thing I'll talk about uh, is Brevo being an integrated security platform. So everyone knows Brevo, I said it in the first kind of sense there, Brevo is a cloud access control company. And a lot of people, when they think about uh, access control, they're just thinking about opening doors, policy doors, getting people through, all that kind of stuff. But if you look at that second paragraph there, you can see that we want to expand access control to include video, elevators, alarms, intercoms, identity, and visitor management. So we're not just trying to be one solution. We're not just trying to be kind of one feature. We're trying to be a whole horizontal, uh, valuable product. Uh, where we bring a bunch of things under the umbrella and provide uh, a lot of value uh, without just being kind of one uh, little feature, only providing one thing in particular. So really trying to spread our capabilities and help you in multiple ways. Going to the multiple or multiple, the next slide, uh, we're talking about our Brevo support staff. So number one thing that I get feedback about uh, Brevo is the people who work here. So whenever I talk about people who love Brevo, they don't talk about the technology, they don't talk about the cloud, they might not even know too much about that. What they know about is our people and how uh, supportive we are and how our tech support is always on call, how our field sales people are always on call, how our design team is always on call. They know that when you call Brevo, you're calling trustworthy, reliable people who can help you with whatever you need. Uh, and even if they don't know about cloud, even if they don't know about software as a service or what any of these terms mean, they know that Brevo is there for them and can offer them tech support any time of day. We can offer trainings uh, and kind of on-site or online trainings. We can drive more business value, all those things we can offer uh, through our people. So really when I think of kind of advantages or reasons to go with Brevo, while we talk a lot about the cloud and uh, we talk a lot about software and service and everything that goes with that, number one, we have to start with our people. Let me bring that up uh, as one of the main things there. 
Now, moving into the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit more about that horizontal kind of security platform and having that integrated platform, uh, including multiple different products and multiple different features. So a couple uh, notes on this. One, obviously, we're focusing on access control still. We're still kind of an access control born bread platform. But if you go up that up that horizon a little bit to video surveillance. I also wanted to let people know that it is something we offer. Uh, it does help you expand that, that offering to get those real-time facility views that are associated with your door events. We also offer identity management where you can create uh, and issue your credentials, permissions. We also offer visitor management where you can do uh, the same thing for your visitors on site. Mobile management, so you can remotely access uh, your facility uh, and remotely administrate your facility. And then data analytics, where you can analyze trends and kind of pull out that valuable business information kind of from uh, the access events and your Brevo platform. So moving one step further, we want to talk about uh, our Brevo mobile pass before we go any further. So one thing that I've been seeing a lot of uh, in this kind of recent uh, COVID times is a lot of people being more interested in a mobile credential. So earlier on, I think it was because a lot of people, uh, whether they had new people coming in or they had to get credentials to people who maybe didn't have credentials all the time or anything like that, there's a lot of people who didn't want to meet face to face with people to issue their cards, to issue their fobs, uh, or really kind of do any kind of physical handoff. What we're able to do with our Brevo Mobile Pass is to give somebody a mobile credential, which obviously means letting people open up the doors with their phone, but it allows us to issue that credential remotely. So I don't have to meet face to face with anybody. I don't have to put my hand in their hand and pass them a fob. I'm just allowed to assign this to them remotely. I can revoke it from them remotely. And then without any assistance from me on site, they can log into the app, open doors and access all those same places that they could with uh, their normal fob uh, or their normal card. So I think that's a huge benefit there. And there's also some other uh, benefits. Obviously, there's no threat of losing your mobile credential. Sure, you may move your phone, lose your phone, but we can always remove that mobile credential from that phone and issue it to a new phone. And it also offers us the ability to use kind of multi-factor uh, authentication to allow people to swipe into kind of high security areas. So instead of just letting people swipe a fob uh, and swipe into a server room, for example, we can have them uh, initiate that um, access event on their phone and then confirm that they want to actually uh, pass through that door and confirm that they're the right person by doing a face ID, by using a pin code uh, or whatever their phone supports. So we can offer an extra layer of security because we're using that mobile device. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about was the, our brief facility safety features. Uh, and this is something that we rolled out, I believe within two or three months of the pandemic uh, really occurring. And this is one of the real strong benefits and one of the real uh, kind of tangible things you can get uh, and see that's a benefit of the cloud. So when the pandemic rolled out, we saw that there was a lot of different needs and a lot of different things that people maybe didn't need yesterday, but they need today. So when that happened, we rolled out four features to allow people to help manage the facility better uh, and not uh, kind of have to do anything to get those. We roll those out into their software without them needing to approve anything, without them needing to plug in any USB sticks, without needing IT on staff. Because we're in the cloud, we are able to push that into their software remotely, and then they could use it right away after that. So those four features that we pushed out included user contact reporting, which just allowed us to figure out who's swiping in where and who's kind of getting close to other people. So we can find maybe if someone becomes sick, we can find out potential contacts they might have had and then tell those people, alert those people, kind of get that warning out there so we can mitigate the spread a little bit. We have mobile self-screening, which basically is a pop-up that occurs on your mobile pass when you're trying to initiate access uh, into a building. It'll pop up and say, hey, are you experiencing any symptoms? Uh, if you are, please do not access the building. And that gives us kind of that warning. That gives us that ability to kind of self-reflect before we swipe into the building. Three, we have personnel control. So this will allow us to suspend user access automatically until they go through a checkpoint, a, a screening checkpoint that is. So uh, might not be too descriptive in that little sentence, but basically what we're doing is uh, shutting down the access for a single user's uh, credential until they swipe in at a centralized point. So before they swipe into, let's say the front door, they can't access the front, the, the back door, they can't access the side door. Once they do swipe into the front door and go through whatever screening process we have there, once they swipe there, it opens up their access to every single door. So that way we make sure everyone who's coming through the door 
uh, is going through that screening checkpoint. We make sure everyone's safe on premises. And four, we have Brevo visitor enhancements, which allows us to screen visitors uh, for symptoms and basically do pop-ups uh, and notifications like we do uh, with the Brevo mobile pass, but a more visitor facing uh, role. So real, really the benefits of these is just kind of giving you guys that tangible example about how we made this, we rolled it out really quickly and immediately it was in uh, their software ready to be used. Now, next thing uh, is another thing we used uh, and rolled out for uh, with COVID in mind, and that's Brevo occupancy tracking. So what this allows us to do is monitor the number of users at any of our sites uh, at any time in real time. So if you see that small little screen there, you'll see I have three uh, different sites and it'll show me the number of people on those sites and it'll show me uh, who is on those sites also. So I can set a, a maximum number of people that I want to come into the site and then get alerts uh, and then be able to kind of mitigate uh, the number of people in there uh, once it reaches that threshold. Uh, but it's really just another way of keeping tabs on those things uh, and making sure uh, we're keeping an eye and make sure we're managing our, our space and our occupancy appropriately. So moving into the Brevo Access demo, I'll talk a little bit about Brevo Access as I'm pulling up the, the feed here. So if you're not familiar with Brevo, for the past couple of years, we've had a platform called Brevo on Air. And that is the dashboard uh, and login that you'll see uh, when you're looking at a standard Brevo system. And I believe it was built uh, maybe 10 years ago now. And it's been kind of the backbone of Brevo since then. But now we've created a new platform and a new dashboard, which gives us the ability to kind of move forward uh, and continue to offer those new features we've rolled out, like those facility safety features, like all those API integrations we've talked about, like all those things uh, that everyone enjoys and uh, everyone sees benefit from. So really, Brevo Access is a new platform built uh, with uh, multiple customers in mind, with integrations with the future in mind, with that cybersecurity in mind. So really just stepping up our game and pretending or pretending, <laughs> preparing for the next 10 years uh, of quality cloud security. So to go through this and show you some of the capabilities of the Brevo Access platform, I'm gonna be running through uh, a few scenarios, five uh, to be exact. So I'll read out the scenario and I'll show you how we would handle that scenario in the Brevo Access dashboard. So to start, I will go with number one, the customer wants to make their GSOC more productive and proactive, needs to be able to see critical events across all of their locations in real time, wants to be able to hold security teams accountable for acting on concerning events quickly. Awesome. So lucky for me, I opened it to the page we need to be on for this. So what we're looking at right now is our global view. Uh, and what we're seeing on this page is, as it sounds, it's a global view of all our sites and kind of all of the access events uh, streaming in in real time. So we have our critical events in that top left pane, our access events in our top middle pane, and our offline devices in our top right pane. And then across the kind of bottom taking up most of the screen uh, is our actual map of all of our sites and what's occurring at those sites. What's great about this is this is interactive. So if I select one of our sites, it will pull up in that moment, all the critical events and all the panels that are on this site. Now, if I want to look at one of my red sites where there's critical events going on, it'll pull up my panels just the same way. But if I go to that critical events tab, it will show me every critical event that's happening at that site. And then if I need to clear them or make sure we keep tabs on them uh, to keep compliance, all we have to do is find the event, maybe check on it, say, hey, well, what happened here? Make sure it's cleared. Then click on this pencil icon and then hit that update button, check off that it's cleared, then add a note that uh, maybe, let's say, employee, whoops, <laughs> type is hard, man, employee swiped at wrong door. So we can easily make those updates and you can see that at, this was cleared on this day at this time by this user and then it attaches my note there as well. So it's really easy to kind of keep that accountability and make sure you're checking off those critical events uh, in a timely manner. So moving on to the next scenario. So scenario two, customer wants to determine how their space utilization has changed as a result of COVID-19, needs to be able to measure daily users and activity over time, wants to compare current activity with historical activity to plan for returning to the office safely in 2021. Awesome. So one step down from the global view 
is what we're going to be using is the data explorer. So I'll select that and kind of explain it as it's pulling up. The data explorer, in my mind, is a kind of a fancy version of reports, a more visual, a more graphical version of reports that allows us to kind of stick our fingers in and kind of manipulate that data within Brevo Access. So we don't have to pull out anything into Excel and reorient it there. This just allows us to stay within uh, the Brevo dashboard uh, and make really quick, really easy changes. So if we're looking at the three, the three graphs I've pulled up right now, we have uh, an all activity trends report at the top. Uh, the bottom left, we have a recent activity uh, kind of bubble uh, event count. At the bottom right, we have uh, a view of all of our sites and the door count at those sites. So if I wanted to look at my uh, kind of trend data for a specific site uh, and how that's looking over time, if this view isn't kind of really, really jiving with me or it's not easy for me to interpret, it's really easy to reorient that into a different graph by going to the top right, hitting those three dots, finding that visual style button, selecting that, and then selecting the type of graph that works best for me or is easy for me to visualize that data. I'll select bar graph. And you'll see, I click on that and it'll reorient that data into a bar graph. And then you can see it's really easy to see that oh, my Colorado warehouse has the most activity, then my Bethesda, then my Amsterdam, and so on. And then if I want to interact with this bar, this specific site, and I want to dig in a little bit further, it's really easy. All I have to do is come over the top of it, select it, and I have four options. I want to see the trend over time. So simply select that trend button. And again, it'll reorient that data into a trend line over time for that Colorado site. So I see it's really easy to kind of cycle through a couple of different graphs and really drill down on the specific details you want. So I think that's really awesome, really easy way to kind of stay within the Brevo dashboard uh, and dig into that information. Scenario three, customer wants to improve security response times without increasing staffing. Needs to be able to prioritize events that require intervention, e.g. door ajar, uh, and wants to define their own workflows and priorities for different event types. Awesome. So now I'll go into what we call our uh, event classification area. So what this allows us to do is prioritize what events are important to us rather than have it be top down pushed by Brevo. So what we saw in the uh, global view was those critical access events that are popping up uh, in that top left pane and then also for each site. And that would include everything that's in this tab. So anything that we put into this tab will show up as a critical access event and will have to be cleared in the same way that you saw me clear it in the first scenario. So if I think something isn't a critical access event, all I have to do is click and drag and pull it to a different area or vice versa. If I think that a door open too long is a critical event, then I can click and drag and pull that into the critical events area. So you can really go mix and match uh, and put in each category, what you think is kind of necessary and what needs to be cleared and uh, all those kind of things. You can do that really easily from this view. Another thing I always like to point out uh, on this scenario is that we also can give live in the moment text or email notifications. So I'll go and show that quickly. We'll scroll down to our configurations tab, select, and then go to our notifications button. And then I'll go to the top, hit our new notification rule select one of the sites that I want to set that notification for, hit notification rule. And you see that I have a couple of these different variables and a couple of these different events that I can set notifications for. And then I can send out email or text alerts to a number of different administrators or users uh, based on what that notification or what that event is. So you have a couple of different ways uh, to do this one. Uh, but so I'll show both just to kind of get more of the full breadth there. Scenario four, customer is growing rapidly and needs its access control to keep up. Needs to be able to integrate access control with other business systems. Wants to spend less time managing access rights for employees and contractors. So this is a big piece uh, where we like to talk about that integrated platform uh, that we mentioned right away on slide one or two. And I don't know if I mentioned this right away, but one of the key ways we are able to offer that integrated platform is by using an API. And if you're unfamiliar with an API, the basic way to understand it is that it's just kind of a connector. So it allows us to hook up Brevo as a software with another software and connect it together to offer more value, to offer expanded features, uh, and to kind of share data across both of those pieces of software. So in this case, the kind of software we want to hook into that we want to take advantage of is identity management software. 
So if you're not familiar with this, this would be something like a Okta or a G Suite uh, or an Azure. So basic way these work is that, uh, let's say, imagine you are a, uh, somebody who's being onboarded into a new company. Obviously these days, everybody has 10, 20, 30 different softwares they have to log into and kind of use for their day-to-day -day work. So what we don't want Andrews to do is log into each piece of software and add those login credentials for each new person that's get hired. Uh, an easy way uh, to get around that is by using these identity management softwares. So instead of having to log into each new software that that person's going to use and give them login credentials there and trying to mistype anything or try to find a secure way to send them that login information, instead of doing that, what we can do is use one of those identity management softwares, input all that information into that centralized piece of software, and then that software will disperse it to every different software that they'll be using. And then if they, at some time in the future, uh, leave the company and those have to be revoked, you can just take those back in that centralized service without having to remember to go into each single one and make sure you're not being charged for an extra seat on a license or anything like that. We can just do it all from that centralized location. So the way this would work with Brevo uh, is it would add them as a user uh, to the access system, to the access control system. So I'll go into our users tab uh, to our users list, and then I'll click on the create a new user button and this is the type of informational input. So you can see we have a first name dropdown, we have a last name dropdown, we have a phone number, an, e num an email address area, along with some custom fields uh, and a group which tells them where they're gonna be able to swipe into at what times. Instead of having to log in and type these things out for each individual person and trying to avoid that human error, we can really easily use those identity management softwares and just get all that information pushed then all these things will auto-populate and you cut down on your workload tremendously. So if anyone is using uh, Okta or Azure, I always recommend uh, them plugging those into Brevo uh, right away. Scenario five. So the customer wants to ensure 24 hour uptime for all doors and cameras, needs to be able to see which devices are active and in use, uh, wants to be able to interact with devices remotely when operations staff are not on site. So awesome, let's go to our devices tab. And what this is, is basically uh, a long list, a long one screen view of all our devices across every one of our sites. So we don't make you dig through a bunch of folders or a bunch of fields uh, to find these. We just let you sit and scroll and kind of take a live view of what's going on at every site across your site. And that way it's kind of like a, a global view for specifically your devices. So if we look and scroll here, we can see that at our Bethesda site, we have a mix of doors and panels. Some of them uh, doors being are open, some are closed. Some of our panels are online, some of our panels are offline. So we can get a really quick view of those things. And then if we need to interact with them, we can also do that on this same page. So if we have, uh, let's say that exit reader and we wanna pulse that door, all we have to do is select, then hit that unlock now button confirm that that's what we want to do. And you can see at the bottom right here, that door was successfully unlocked. So it's really easy. You don't have to search through a bunch of fields. You don't have to switch pages. You can look at every single device you have and interact with it on this page. So just try to make that as simple and as fluid as possible. All right, so that will wrap up my demo portion. So I'll pull it back to my slides. And then as I'm doing that, I'll open it up for Q&A. Dave, do we have any questions as of yet? Uh, Deanna, it doesn't look like we have any questions just yet. So I would remind everybody that uh, is on the demonstration uh, and the webinar here today. Um, within your tool there, uh, you should be able to ask a question. Uh, online and um, again, we don't have any as of yet. So we'll we'll hang tight here for just a moment, uh, see if there are any questions, and if not, we can certainly um, let you get back to your day. So uh, as Dion had mentioned, we certainly appreciate your time uh, in listening to the presentation today. But give everybody just another minute. And while we're giving everyone that minute, if you do come up with something a little bit later. 
there is mine and Dave's email, and we're more than happy uh, to receive your questions uh, at any time. And now that I see that, I see my last name is misspelled in the email. <laughs> but <laughs> if you just use my, my last name that's in the black there and put that in the email spot, then that'll work out just fine. Thanks, Dion. It looks like uh, we don't have any questions, so I think um, we'll end the session for today. Dion, thank you very much. Great job in the presentation.